Hey everybody, it's Brian of The Weekend Cruiser, where I go on a weekend cruise just about every weekend. But this is one of my larger sailings of the entire year, probably of my entire cruising career. I am on a 12 night voyage here on Celebrity Solstice. Now I wanted to give you a full walking tour. This is the 11th day that I've been here. So I figured out a few things like this about this ship, but she is the Celebrity Solstice and she is part of the Solstice class. First of her name, if you will. And she's gonna be coming in at about 122,000 gross tons. She was put into service in 2008 and she's gonna have a passenger count of about 2,850 individuals. So it is a good size ship. Now you may have also seen my Celebrity Silhouette walking tour that I did just about a month ago probably. That ship is gonna be more remodeled, more modern than this ship is. It has not got the same refined touches, if you will, that the Celebrity Silhouette has. So if you're looking between the Silhouette and the Solstice, make sure you're checking out the full walking tour of the Silhouette as well. But this is gonna be a full walking tour of Celebrity Solstice. It is still a beautiful ship. I like the design of it and the flow of it. There's just a few things that I'm gonna call out that are gonna be different than some of the others in the class. So let's jump on into a full walking tour of the Celebrity Solstice. So welcome to the Celebrity Solstice. I'm gonna start here on deck three, and then we're gonna work our way all the way up showing you the common spaces. As you can very easily identify, this has been a Christmas and New Year's sailing. We were here for both of the occasions. So I imagine most of these decorations you're gonna see here in the Centrum will start to come down at this point, but the Centrum is beautiful. It's one of my favorite areas to hang out on this ship. Though on deck three, there's honestly not too terribly much to do. When you come over to the left-hand side of deck three, you'll see that you have guest relations over here. This is the last day of our cruise. So you're gonna see people um, lining up to take care of whatever the final things are that they want to do. Coming over to the other side, you'll see that you've got a piano here. And you're also, during the evening times, gonna have a DJ, some dance parties, different things that are gonna happen on this dance floor that I'm standing on. So this can be a good place to hang out. It can also sometimes be a loud place to hang out, depending on when you come here you're gonna have the Passport Bar over here. So this is a bar that you know I don't think has been really frequented by a lot of folks because it's here on deck three and this is kind of all that's on deck three. It is a very much loungy, kind of darker area on the ship. I think there's better bars, but if you're looking for one where you can just walk up to the bar, this is gonna be a good option. Also make sure you can see that there are staterooms down there. So if you are staying on deck three, know that your stateroom may be directly beside of a bar. Could have some noise issues for you if that is the case. Coming over to this side, you're gonna have your shore excursion, something that we have done a ton of here in Asia and they have been expensive. But if you need to book anything, you can always book it on the app online these days, um, or you can come to the Shorex team when you get here. Coming out of the Shorex group, you're gonna have Luminae. This is where the people in the suites are gonna be coming to. So the menu here, I always love showing you what they serve here because the food looks amazing. I'll do a quick tour through here, but this again, is only for folks in suites. So if you do get the chance to come in here, I highly recommend it. I hear the food has been tremendous, but I have not quite done it myself. So we'll come over here, show you how elegant it looks like. It is a good spot, but again, only for those sweet guests. Coming back out, I'm gonna cut over to the main dining room now and show you what's over there. That's where I've been eating. I've not been eating in the sweet section, unfortunately, maybe next cruise, but I've been eating in the main dining room and the food has been really good. So much so that on day 10, I think that's when my body just tapped out and said, okay, Brandon, no more food. You can't eat anymore um, because the food has been very good uh, and I've been eating more than I should. Here's just a quick glimpse of the menu. If you can see that, it looks like we're having trout tonight. See if I can get in here. These doors are unlocked and they are. So this is the main dining room on deck three. This is gonna be where your traditional seatings are gonna take place at. So if you are doing um, the My Time Dining, if you're coming at any random time you want to, that's gonna be up on deck four, which is just above us. But this is a really elegant, really nice and classy main dining room. I like to joke that they don't build them like this anymore. I really like the way this looks and is set up. Plenty of crystals, lights all around very bright during the day. So if you come here for breakfast or for lunch, make sure that you are getting a window seat if you can. Looks like there's a presentation of some kind going over here. Maybe next cruise. Coming back out of the main dining room, we are now on deck four aft in the middle section of the ship. 
the elevators on this class of ship, I don't necessarily understand it, are blended in with the common area. So it's kind of the hallway and it goes into the bar as well. One thing to note, this floor also has your restroom on deck four. So the female and male are on both sides of deck four midships. So if you're on three or five, you're gonna to wanna to come to deck four. You've got the martini bar here. This is a fan favorite for most if you're in the captain's club. This is also where your happy hour is gonna be from five to seven o'clock and you can get those free drinks. They also put on really cool shows over here. So the martini folks, martini makers, mixologists, put on tremendous shows with their skill sets, some juggling, all sorts of fun stuff going on there. I'm gonna cut over to the other side quickly. And that's probably the side that I should have started on because it would have made more sense, but thank you for bearing with me. There's a quick cut through there. This is gonna be Cellar Masters over on this side. So if you come in here, you'll see that this is the wine bar and it is also the sports bar. Kind of an interesting combination, but if you want a good glass of wine, they're gonna be storing that in here. And then if you come over to the other side, you'll see that sports are everyone's favorite, especially on the sea day. Neat place to hang out. Doesn't sit too terribly many people. So if there's a game that you wanna see, make sure that you're coming early to check that out. All right, we do have a casino on this ship, though it has been quiet uh, most of the time that I've been here. I'm gonna walk over to the other side because you know I don't like cutting through casinos. They don't like videos in there for some reason. I guess they think I'm actually gonna go in there and win some money for a change. But coming through here, you'll see this is what I call like the Vegas kind of setup because you've got your casinos and slot machines on the right. Then over here on the left, you're gonna have some of your stores. Now the higher end stores, we're gonna see in a moment up on the upper floors. This is gonna be, you know, if you want some logo store stuff, if you want something that says celebrity on it, that's where you're gonna come for this, or maybe you forgot flip-flops, something easy, you're gonna do that here. And there's also a casino bar here as well. And a lot of people don't think about this, but this can also be a sports bar for you as well. They do have TVs here that looks like two of them are not on anything, but they could be. And then you're gonna have your photo section over here on the right. So if you've got the photo package, looking at buying some of those professionally made pictures, this is where you're gonna come and buy one of those. More shops, this is your spirits and such is what they call it on the ship. So if you want some of that duty-free alcohol where they don't have a tax on it, this is where you're gonna pick it up at. You're then gonna have your next cruise office or future cruise office. So I'm just gonna peek in here real quick. If you wanna get some discounts on your next cruise, these people would be more than glad to help you out. And they do, by the way, if you're looking at a short cruise, I know this is a 12 niner, you're looking at a short cruise, they're gonna have um, onboard credit that they will give you as well. They added the three nights to it, which you know I am a huge fan of, that they didn't have for the longest time. This is Quasar. On this ship, I've not really seen this area used very much at all. So it looks like it's supposed to be a dance floor, like modern age kind of dance floor. You've got a little space-like thing over there, pretty colors, but I've not really seen much happening here. Even the bar I don't think has been open most of the time, at least from when I've walked by, to take a quick look at it. You're also gonna have some activities in this section here. It's an interesting spot, kind of in the middle or a secondary um, atrium, if you will, centrum but they will do some activities, some fun shows here. Not too many chairs, so if you need to sit, make sure you're checking that out. Coming into the Cele Good Celebrity Central. Good morning. Into Celebrity Central, I'll be quiet to see if anything's going on. Oh, they're playing a movie. All I have achieved is a certain degree of celebrity among the prisoners. All right, so they're playing a movie, so we're not gonna go in there right now, it's really dark anyway. But it sounded like there was a documentary, so when you are taking longer sailings, which the Celebrity Solstice has been doing, you're gonna find that oftentimes you're gonna have educational content that'll talk about the ports, the history, you know, natural flyer, flowers, resources, stories, things of that nature. Coming into the theater. Take a quick look here. One of the downsides to this theater, honestly, is the chairs. The chairs here are a little dated. Let me see if I can show you. See, they've got a little bit of wear and tear on them and they sit at a downward sloping angle. So if you have problems sitting, what I recommend is sitting in the high stools in the back. This is where I have liked to sit. They are more comfortable. Same in Celebrity Central. We went in there to watch Elf, everybody's favorite Christmas movie. 
Um, and the chair almost made me leave because Love Elf could not stand the chair. You've also got a great balcony section, so if you don't know who the performer is and you might want to leave, you know, do yourself a favor of sit near the back if you're uncertain about how that day is going to go. Looks like they're setting up for an event, but the balconies had really good um, seats as well. Don't sit on the front row because you don't get as good of an angle because of the glass that's there. So we are now on deck five forward, all the way at the front of the ship. So when you think of entertainment, you think of theaters, think of the forward section of the ship. Walking outside on deck five forward, you'll see that they've got a couple of chairs over here on the left side for us. One interesting thing, I've not seen cushions on these chairs the entire sailing. This is the 11th night, day that we've been here. Actually 12th day, 11th night. They've not had chairs, which is really surprising to me. Um, and this class of ship also, when you walk around, doesn't give you great views of the ocean, which I just kind of miss. So this is not a spot that you normally see a lot of people hanging out like you may on other cruise ships where their debarkation deck has just more to offer you with better chairs, more chairs, more shade, um, and just better views. Looking at a lifeboat, not the best. Here are your high-end stores that are here. So if you want to come and blow some money, again, tax and duty free, you may be stopped by customs because there are, I've heard stories of people who buy expensive things here and then they get flagged for customs, go figure. This is where your art auction is gonna be. So they've got that section over there. So if you're looking at buying art, you can absolutely come on board the ship and do that as well. The nice shops continue. You're gonna switch over to the men's shop, which is one that I don't think that I recognized before, but if you want some high-end men's fashion, you can do that here as well. Pieces of time and you're gonna have a Breitling store. So if I was to buy something here, I don't want to do it over in Breitling, but that's just me um, and well outside of my budget right now. Coming to this side, you've got probably the quietest bar on the cruise, which is the World Class Bar. So they serve, I believe, um, mixed drinks here as well, but you're not going to find a lot of people here. It's been really, really quiet for people to come in this section. Looking down, you're going to have tons of seating down here, but I don't think I've ever seen anyone sitting down there unless you're really trying to squirrel away, get away by yourself. Not really gonna see anybody down there. So if you wanna get, again, walk up bar somewhere nice, it is kind of in the hallway once again, but it is a good bar for being able to just quickly get a drink and relax a little bit. You're gonna have sushi on five over here, one of the specialty restaurants. So if you want an upcharge to be able to pay for your sushi, you can come say hello to these guys, see them getting ready to make lunch service for us in nice windows over on the side. El Bacio. By the way, I've been working on my pronunciation of this. It's not El Bacio, it's El Bacio. You gotta say it with an Italian accent. This is where everybody can come for their coffee fix. Captain just made an announcement, so people are starting to wake up, starting to stir at this point. If you sit down on the table, see that they've got the menus are down, and then there's some that are, actually there's not. If the menu's down, it means that the wait staff has already come by and asked you for your order. If you are having it standing straight up, it means they still need to take your order or you can walk to the bar and just get it to go. That's always an option as well. Coming down here, you've got a space that I honestly have not used much. Um, here's, I, I don't understand this space on Solstice class ships. This is another random, let me be quiet and see if you can hear it. You've got birds playing in the background. I, I just don't understand this space. But here is the ensemble lounge. They've had really good music in here the times that I've walked through here, but I just don't think about this hallway too much to come back here because I don't have access to these things because um, this is a lot of specialty stuff. So Michael's Club here is your specialty or your suite lounge. So okay if I take a video real quick? Thank you. So this is classic cruising if you will. Look at the colors in here. Very dark but it is nice. Um, it is an upscale event where you can kind of squirrel away and you can have your martini happy hour over here and enjoy. Hey everybody, wave, check out the video. Some folks that I met on the cruise ship. I meet so many good people on cruise ships, especially followers of the channel. So it's always special when you all come up and say hello, especially when I'm on a 12 night in Asia. I don't expect to you know, meet a lot of people over here that are checking out weekend cruises, but it still happens every now and again. That was um, up here that I had met earlier. Um, and shout out to their brother, Alan, as well. Here is Murano. This is gonna be your French restaurant. And honestly, probably the nicer one of all that they have here, the more fancy. 
So if you're looking at doing a special event, an anniversary, consider Murano as this is gonna be the more elegant of your options that you can choose from. But it is gonna be an upcharge. So make sure that you're booking dining packages in advance. They do not honor those once you get on board. So if you want a dining package, internet package, drink package, what have you, make sure you always book those ahead of time because they're not gonna be able to give you that price when you go on board. I promise you, it will be a lot more expensive. Coming towards the back. So again, Ensemble has great seating. Normally you can always find something there. Christmas decorations hopefully coming down. Today is January 2nd here, so it's time for it to come down. You're gonna have specialty restaurants back here as well in the very aft section of the ship. I kind of wish that they didn't put specialty back here because I like these, or I like this space. They can do a lot more with it. Let's see if I can pop in here real quick. This is the Silk Restaurant. I honestly don't even know what kind of food they have here because we've been eating in the main dining room and had a blast to it. Let's see if they have a menu over here. Looks like this is, I don't know what that is. I can't pronounce it, but it looks kind of Italian. Maybe, but Tuscan Grill that we're gonna go into is truly the Italian restaurant. Tuscan is probably my favorite on here, and you'll see that given its size, it's a lot of other people's favorites as well. On this class of ship, one thing that I really like is the window. So if you can get a window seat over here, you're gonna have beautiful views. They're doing some cleaning right now, thank you. So making it look good for everybody who wants to come in here and grab some food at the end of the day. But this is a beautiful restaurant, love those windows. And normally if you're gonna to come to a special restaurant and you want a certain table, you absolutely need to talk to a maitre d'. You need to say, hey, this is what I want. What time can you get me there? And be a little bit flexible with it. Coming over here, you're gonna have blue. So if you're in the aqua class, you're gonna have access to the blue restaurant, which is here, which is considered a step up in um, main dining options for people in aqua class. It also prides itself on being a little bit healthier food. So in the morning, they're gonna have like smoothies and things like that. We booked it on our last year's long cruise, and honestly, we didn't see a lot of value in it. The food in the main dining room is very good. I mean, we've missed probably breakfast in here the most just because of those smoothies. The blueberry smoothie was really good, but for the price difference, that's just not something we wanted to do again on this sailing, especially given how expensive everything else is with the flights and the shore excursions here in Asia. All right, so that concludes the interior spaces of deck three, deck four, and deck five. We're now in deck five aft. I'm gonna walk back through ensemble, lounge, and we're gonna cut upstairs in the aft stairwell. As you go up, you'll see that there's many common spaces and places that I'm gonna call out, point out to you as we go through. So we're gonna jump around from floor to floor until we finally pop up at the pool deck. So be right back. All right, so we're here on deck six in the middle of the ship, and you'll see it's right beside of the elevators, there they are. You can step into the Celebrity Eye Lounge. So Celebrity partnered with Apple Computers and has tons of computers in here. This is probably one of the least used rooms. You do still have to have the internet package if you want to sign into one of these computers. Great place to be able to print out boarding passes, do those kind of things if you need to. It does come with Starlink on this ship, but I will tell you the internet has been spotty at best and there's even a day where we didn't have any reception for about four or five hours. Deck seven midship is where you're gonna find a place called Team Earth. And so this is one where you can certainly tell that it's not been as renovated as the silhouette. You're gonna have your concierge as well sitting up here. So if you need support with your captain's club, this is where you're gonna to come to get that support or ask questions. You're then gonna see just some information about the earth, you know, some natural stuff up there, beautiful pictures. And then a little bit of an icon over here. Cruise ships, as you know, huge into artwork and looks like an interactive display. You've got over here a very good reading spot with amazing lighting, as well for selfies, selfies looking down into the centrum. And on deck nine midship, you're also gonna have the card room. It is a smaller room, but I'll say that it is one of the most popular rooms on the ship. This has been a longer crew, so we've got a lot of games that have been going on. People playing cards, different kind of tile games and you're gonna have a few games back here as well. If you forgot to bring one, they do have some that you can grab and play with some friends. 
So you're probably starting to see what I say. There's all these little spots on the midship area and you can see all of them from here. This is deck 10, the library that I'm at. So you see, you've got your game room and then team earth down below all getting amazing lighting. The library here actually has plenty of books. They've got plenty of books in all sorts of languages as well. So if you're looking at finding a place to sit, to read, this is normally a quieter area. And there's even a hidden little spot that I'm not gonna show later up there on the next deck up. All right, so we are now on deck 12 aft, and this is your first introduction to the real outside section that you're gonna be hanging out at. Do note that they have restrooms on this side as well as um, the starboard side that you can use. They've got some cushy chairs up here. Those probably go faster than anything else here. And they're gonna have free towels for the taking. So you don't have to check these out, just grab them. They'll even put them on the chairs most mornings for you to be able to use. You can have a stage over here, so if there's any kind of events going on, that's where the music, the band is gonna be at. They're gonna have two different pools, lots of hot tubs on here, two different pools outside, I should say. But it is a good spot. It's not been too terribly crowded out here. Again, we're in Asia, so it hasn't been as warm as a Caribbean cruise. But the hot tubs have been popular. We also celebrated New Year's on the pool, which was a great time. You're gonna have the pool bar here as well. So if you're looking for a drink by the pool, that's where you're gonna go to grab one of those. Again, you see cushy chairs, they go first. And this hammock here, I have never seen it open or available. It's always taken. Coming into the solarium. This is not my favorite. I love the cushions, love the blue, but it is air conditioned. For whatever reason, they air conditioned this place. And I just find it a little bit cool. There's no music playing like you're gonna have in the pool bar, they have, or not the pool bar, by the outside by the pool. You're gonna have a little bit of music there. I've heard that this is a heated pool, but I have not gotten in it to confirm. Shockingly, I'm not really a pool person. As much as I love coming on cruises, I don't get into the pool very often. Coming back outside, actually, let me turn this way. We're gonna cut through the hallway quickly, and then I'll come back to that to show you what all they have there. But I wanted to show you something that I think most people don't even realize is here and how good it is. So you're gonna have these spa cafes. If you're looking for smoothies, juices, amazing breakfast spots. If you wanna come somewhere, eat outside, not as crowded as the Ocean View Cafe, the buffet on board the Celebrity Solstice, this is where you're gonna to wanna to come and check out. So let's cut to the port side, or excuse me, the starboard side. Now I think I'm getting my sides confused here. This is where your spa and gym are gonna be. So if you're looking at having a treatment of some kind, this is where you're gonna to come to do that. They've got something for everybody. These people will be more than glad to help you out with that as well. You're gonna have their gym, which is very bright, very airy. And it has stayed busier than any gym I have ever seen on a cruise ship. So I'll give you just a quick view of this. The light's always really bright in here, but this is the gym. You'll see there is an outdoor seating section. They're gonna have some weights over there as well. Free weights, that is. But it's missing a Smith machine. Doesn't have any foam rollers. Doesn't have um, a Swiss ball. No bench press machine. So it's missing a few things that I really like, uh, but we can make do with all that. Because, you know, I try to show you all, see if I can get to it. Do a tour so you can customize your workouts based on what they actually have, because every cruise ship is a little bit different. Coming from deck 12 to deck 14. So like most cruise ships, it does not have a deck 13. So you kind of feel like you walk really quick when you go from 12 to 14, but here we are. We have now gone from deck 12 to 14, skipping over 13. You've got your conference center over here. Uh, it is toddler time, so we're not gonna show you that, but it is primo space here on the cruise ship and they put it right there. So we're not gonna go in there at this moment. Bathrooms are located on this side of the ship. So if you're in the Sky Lounge, this is one of my favorite spots to hang out at, especially in Asia. Great to watch going into ports because this is the forward section of the ship. Hidden section right there. And then you're gonna have your seating back here in the Sky Lounge. Always very relaxing. They do activities in here as well. They do silent meditations, they do trivia. They have all sorts of stuff that they do back here. But everybody's favorite place to hang out is gonna be the very forward section of the ship. That's gonna give you the best view. 
into where we're going. Windows haven't been as clean as I'd like. We came to try to come up here to watch Salem one day. And you see the windows, some of them have just this film on them. So they're not ideal. But not that many people normally will come up here. I think that if you're going to get coffee downstairs at El Bacho, bring it up here and enjoy. Because the view is absolutely stellar. See that they do play live music over here. You can have a DJ. They do the activities. Lots happen in the Sky Lounge, and it's honestly one of my favorite spots. So we're going to walk back outside to the pool now. And I'll show you deck 14 on what your seating options are going to be. And I think we might, I might actually go ahead and take you upstairs to the solstice deck. So on this ship, you'll see that the solstice deck is not converted into a suite deck yet. So you still have full access to the solstice deck. On the silhouette, this is going to be for suites only. So it's a bit different. So we're now walking up to deck 15 is where we're coming to. And then I guess the next one's going to be deck 16, though it feels kind of like a half deck. So you've got chairs here. This does continue all the way up to the front as well. You can kind of see why nobody's sitting up here. It does get breezy. One of the downsides about being at the forward section of the ship, you're going to feel some breeze. But there are some people hanging out here. This will wrap all the way around to the other side, but I'm going to avoid doing that for now because I think you get the idea. But if you want to come up here, they have normal chairs. I wouldn't say that they have any real comfy chairs up there. It's just the standard issue lounge chair. When you go to the silhouette and you have it as a suite, then you're going to see that they have better seating options available for you. The tent here, kind of like to call it where there's shade every now and again. You can see that this side does not have any shade right now, even though it's got the overhang there. That's going to be on the other side. And then when the sun gets to the other side, whenever that is, depending, we don't move directions, but it'll flip to the other side. You have your second mass bar here. This is also one of the smoking sections, designated smoking sections. So if you're looking for those, that's going to be here. This is also the walking track. So oftentimes you'll see people walking through here, jogging through here. Just make sure that you're conscious of who's coming at you and how quickly they're coming towards you. Because you might want to just step out of the way so that you don't get injured and they don't get injured with an accident of some kind. Keep on walking down. You've got a decent view of the pool from up here as well. So if you wanted to see everything that's happening on the pool, give you a really good bird's eye view of it. You've got the two different pools that are there. You've got four different hot tubs, not to mention you've got the solarium space that also is going to come with two hot tubs and an additional pool. All right, let's head inside and check out the food. Everybody's favorite that we have. So this is the Ocean View Cafe. So if you're coming here, it is a little bit higher than other cruise ships. You know, down there is where the pool is on deck 12. The buffet, Ocean View Cafe, is on deck 14 aft. So we're going to cut through on this side. You see again, still have our decorations up for Kwanzaa and Christmas. It is probably busy in here right now, so I apologize for all the people, maybe a little bit of noise. The things you need to know in here, first of all, this is where your gelato is going to be. This is the free stuff, the free ice cream, I should say. Not gelato, it's the free ice cream. Make sure you're checking that out. You're going to have all of your meals served in here. If you want something that's quick, grab and go. Make sure you walk around. There is a little bit of duplication that's going to happen with the food on the stations. But the best food, this is what I always like to tell people, always go to the back when you're on a cruise ship for a buffet. The best food is going to be back there on that line. So you're going to find the high dollar stuff, if you will. The rest of it is just to fill you up. It's still good. They're going to have fruits, cheeses, all that kind of stuff. But this is where the good stuff is going to be. And right now, it is the only stuff because they are going in between breakfast and lunch. It looks like we're following some dishes here. I'm going to cut around. And the reason I want to show you this is because you've got beverages back here. So. They've got beverages up front that you probably saw. This is going to be an easier spot to grab ice, 
grab some water, because nobody really comes back here. You're then gonna have the outdoor space of the Ocean View Cafe, which is the Ocean View Bar. I think this is one of the more undervalued areas. I love eating out here. They also have a bar here, which I think is well done on the silhouette. This is actually um, a place that they took away from. So they removed this bar and added more seating, but I like this one much better. This does exit from both sides of the Ocean View Cafe. So whichever side you come out of, you can access this section. So now we're gonna cut upstairs to deck 15 again. This is gonna be the Sunset Bar, which is again a place you're gonna see it hasn't been renovated. You've got a random table and chairs here. So if you wanna have a nice moment with two people, you can sit there and have amazing views of the aft section of the ship or the wake. So if you look around, this is the Sunset Bar. You're gonna see that they've got grass over here. On the silhouette, you may remember, this is a whole redone section that is just absolutely beautiful. You can walk out here, it is real grass. Um, so if you wanna go lay out on the grass, you can do that. They've got seats. Some of them are in the sun. Some of them are gonna be in the shade and that's gonna always change. Great place to see the sunset, no doubt. Depending on where it is, of course. But it is just a really cool bar to come and hang out at. This is also gonna be your smoking section over here on the starboard side. I do miss the silhouette though. That's one place that I think the silhouette really perseveres is I loved the Sunset Bar and Silhouette and what they've done with it. Again, make sure you're checking out that video. Just see what the differences are. This isn't bad, but that's just much better. You're then gonna have your lawn here. This is a spot that I think is a bit of a novelty for Carnival Cruise Lines that I don't see a lot of people using it. It normally stays really quiet. There's these little booths here or tents that you can sit in. And you know what, they're nice, but they come at a cost. You have to pay for them, they are an upcharge. So you can't just go in there and sit down. And then you're gonna have people playing some games. I'm gonna cut through here to show you a little bit better. You got some games going. They do play movies and things out here. I think that's probably when it gets most of its people is when there's a movie specifically in the evenings that's playing here. But otherwise you're probably not gonna see a lot of folks. Here's a big difference, and I'm not sure how I feel about this. It is hot glass. So if you wanna see a glass blowing exercise or demonstration, you can come here and watch these guys. You can even do this as an activity and pay an upcharge in order to make your own blown glass. So just something to consider. You can watch or you can actively participate. Um, really neat that they can have something so terribly hot on a cruise ship. You think there'd be a fire risk, but hey, what do I know? Um, maybe that's why they don't have that on the silhouette. And on the silhouette, that is another dining option. So that concludes the full walking tour of the Celebrity Solstice. It is a beautiful ship even though it's not as renovated, it is a 2008 build and you don't see some of the amplification or some of the upgrades that you see on some of her sister ships. So if you are looking at coming on a longer cruise, I highly recommend the Celebrity Solstice. But if you wanna check out what your options are, check out the full walking tour of the Celebrity Silhouette video here that'll show you how these spaces change based on when they've been upgraded. All right, everybody, this is Brandon, the Weekend Cruiser, hoping to see you on a weekend cruise soon.